Welcome to the Lords of Loud. We're four music fans from Australia who've turned our old email debates into this podcast. I'm Lord Ben, and if we were the Beatles, I'd obviously be the smart one, but modest too. With me as always is Lord Brett, the funny one, only because we've seen him dance, Lord Kev, the quiet one, because he can't clip on a mic, and Lord Al, the cute one, with the perfect face for any podcast. And welcome back to the Lords of Loud. Yes. And thank you very much for joining us again on another wonderful episode here. Guaranteed wonderful. <laughs> Guaranteed wonderful or your money back. Mm-hmm. All right. So on tonight's episode, this is a, this is a uh, continua or not continuation. So it's another episode of our important albums. It's series. a second wind. So this is, <laughs> this is the second wind <laughs> of the important albums. This is volume two. Important albums, volume two. Is that... Not so important now. Yes. The first one was on volume one. I don't know what's going no, on. Really. It's even more it's important. Also more important. I think ah. it's going to be important in a different way. Could be important oh, yeah. in a different way. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. But before we get into that, of course, we have to do our very popular episode, Album of the Week. And Kev, I believe you've got an Album of the Week this week. I do have Album of the Week this week. And I dedicate it to my lovely wife, Heidi. Um, no, ten years married no. this year. Oh. Yay. And our third time this year of seeing the Moon Jewel. The Moon Duo. Moon Duo, the nice. um, wonderful American psychedelic rock album, uh, rock group, and um, the offshoot of Wooden Ships. Mm-hmm. Um, the Moon Duo became a trio, in fact. <laughs> um, they were previously the, just the two of them doing their psychedelic thing, and uh, we saw them live, and there was three of them. And weirdly enough, Heidi and I had brought along our best man um, to that show. Mm-hmm. So um, the psychedelic connections were just mm-hmm. non stop, wow. off chops. Incredible. Uh, Stars Are the Light is the title of the 2019 release. Yep. And um, I've got here the quote that their intention of this album is to connect the body to the stars. Ah. Uh, uh, whose isn't? They do not miss their genre, let me tell you. Psychedelic, <laughs> you know, music at its <laughs> yeah. absolute peak. Yep. Um, I, I, and a light show to match, I'll have to say. So, um, yeah, check nice out one. Stars mm. Are the Light. That's Very real. good. Mm. Enjoy it. All right, thanks, Kev. And tonight's sponsor album. Now we do like a bit of keys on this on this program. We do, we do. especially for yeah. a sponsor album. And we do tend the to just... we do tend to give the old Hammond uh, a bit of a bash. But tonight we have one of the classic. A a, it's a Hammond organ for the uninitiated. That's mm. right. And you could Hammond probably organ, say we, we don't mind giving the Hammond organ a bit of a stroke, Hal. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Just like your mum. So tonight's sponsor. <laughs> Is another classic Polydor release, and this is Polydor, yes. Hammond a Go Go, mm. uh, and Hammond a Went Went. This is this is James Last, uh, yes. who was a Hammond aficionado, uh, and on this there's uh, and what is what is good on this album, which I found very helpful actually, was that they they break down uh, the tracks into genres, dance genres. Nice. Ah. Okay, so we've got you know Foxtrot songs here. We've got Hello Dolly. Uh, Millard, S- Siesta Magnifique. Okay. Uh, then we've got Cha Cha songs. Yes. Uh, more more Foxtrot. So obviously that's how. Yeah. If you're having a dance party, obviously that's the order you're supposed to do Covering it. Covering a lot of ground, isn't he, uh, James? Mm. We're going to a Cuban a Cuban Fox. Oh. Uh, I think for the young uh, children, you shouldn't call it a dance party. We be, you would be having uh, a ballroom dance party, right. mm. or else people would be thinking they'd that's be it. taking lollipops and <laughs> dropping some yep. white tablets. And then we do, then we go into a bit of a samba. All right. Yeah. Time to get your blue sticks out. And then this is the highlight of the night. This is when Mm -hmm. you you take your your partner by the hand and really really put on the moves in the slow section. Um, But yeah. So basically, you you stick this album on and it leads you through the whole evening of uh, you know how to uh, crack on to your. It's going to get you late. That's what you're saying. It's going to get you late. It's going to get you late. Probably. Probably 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 it's basically a Valentine's release. Does it have a polka at the end? Uh, it doesn't have a polka, <laughs> Al. That, no. That's only for you. Uh, that's that's how I am my that's evening. That's when you phone in your Uber. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, now uh, Lord Al, there has been some requests. People want to know uh, how you get how how we how how are these sponsors picked for the show. If you want to run through our five step process for that, mm. oh, that'd sure be really good. Just because people mm. just. 
Why yeah. not? Oh, look, we, we filter these things, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a rigorous selection sort of, process. Sort of, sort of <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can... Oh, well, I don't want to go into too many details. Yeah. A, lot of, but a, lot of, a lot of it is trade secrets. So yeah, can't really that's, that's the thing. I think, I think it's overall, secrets, it? it's all about quality, really. Yeah. Yeah. There's, oh, yeah. you know, various There's metrics. certain benchmarks that they have to hit. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, so, what, so what you're saying is our process is part of our intellectual property, which you're not willing to release yeah. Well, point. yeah, I'm a little happy. Maybe at some point, maybe at some point in the future. But needless to say, you can win some of these albums. We will ship them out to you. Yeah, I mean, don't despair. We want, we want to listen. share the love of music. For those at home going, oh, God, I've got a dance party coming up next week. If a only I had Hammond to go-go. A ballroom dance party. I need a bit of on, trot. Throw on the old turntable for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've got know, my pina coladas. Just reach out, reach out <laughs> to us. I've got my little trousers. Yeah. <laughs> reach out to us on social media. Just need an album. That album, I will personally sign it and I will send it to you. Oh, sign. In yeah. the mail. Uh, increasing, we're with the value. The, increasing the value to mm. what three or four percent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You'd be using the the royal seal on that one, wouldn't you? I'll be using the royal seal. <laughs> so tonight's topic. Whew. What are we get into tonight, Ben? All right. So tonight's topic. We're talking about important albums, uh, volume two. So oh, yeah. who wants to kick us off with an album they feel that we didn't mention in the first show? Can Can I kick it off? You can, Brett. Can I kick it off? Um, like some other bands we've mentioned before, the na this name of the album is also the name of the band because mm. it's their like debut. It's their debut. Mm. Could be the same one I have, actually. Roxy Music, Roxy no, Music. No, it's not. <laughs> but, yeah, it's um, a great album. Uh, 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 early 70s. Mm. Yep. Uh, uh, the, the fusion of art, music, fashion. Art rock, fashion, um, yep. and, and, yeah, that, I mm -hmm. guess some people would say... Uh, Instigators of glam, instigators mm -hmm. of, of art rock. And, and so what um, year? Oh, this is like 73? I thought 73. Two maybe? Two or three? Two or three. Sorry about that. Let's check. Yep. So uh, really quite early. I thought you said so. Like when I think Roxy Music Code, immediately. Oh, you think Avalon, which is the end? Yes, I think more, you know, the late 70s, early 80s. So yeah, no, this is the... That you'd be wrong. Yeah, well, that's, I would yeah, be wrong. Because this is... This is uh, it was, yeah, for those playing at home, it was 72. Right? 72, there you go. Wow. So this is okay. Brain In All. Yeah, this is the classic. This is the full this line. Is, this is Virginia full line. Yeah, and Virginia Zary. playing the strand. Oh, yes. it's just, yeah. you're not familiar with this, Lord Al? I have heard some of the early uh, Roxy music. I yeah. didn't like it at all because it was too, no. yeah. Ow. well, I guess it was oh, too hard wow. rock. And for those playing at home, we are still looking for another member. Of <laughs> because, because I just like what I like. Because and I, and I know you, I know you like the the we tend to split the Brian, three to one on yeah, the Brian, I know you love the Brian <laughs> Ferry only one guy tuxedo talking sense uh, Martini Mahan singing Avalon to the girl. Mm. Right, I know that's yeah. your style. But come back to what I love about this is is it's you know zero to one hundred. These guys, a, a lot of the guys in the band hadn't released. Yep. You know, records, and then, wow, they put this thing on, and it just cut through. It's just... Uh, what, what is uh, crazy about these, um, uh, like, some of these early albums of these bands, these debuts, like, a lot of these guys, like, they're not even necessarily musicians. Like, no. These guys are just coming together as friends, going, yeah, well, yeah, sure, I'll sing on it, or yeah, sure, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'll yeah. learn bass, or that's I'll... Yeah, that's what, more amazing than that is and the it's clothes like, they were proceeding. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. You know, these are yeah. guys in boas, you know, mm. yeah. and, you mm -hmm. know, false eyelashes and God knows jodhpurs, and previously they'd been a bricklayer. But you the know, fact, like, yeah, yeah. Like the David, fact, David Bowie's back in band, yeah. you know, famously were just wearing all this eyeshadow and stuff, and that's yeah, it. they were literally working as tight. But the fact you can come together and release, like, a classic out, Lady Tron is one of my favourite songs. Yeah. And uh, Virginia you know, playing for me. That's my oh, um, Virginia playing yeah, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, my uh, uh, karaoke classic. If you're ever <laughs> uh, uh, unlucky wow. enough to be locked I mean, in a whole room, album, classic uh, for 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 karaoke. And a great, and great uh, uh, cover as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, now, now um, uh, because because again, what what I love about them is stylistically consistent, um, but uh, but there's this avant-garde stuff that runs through it. Uh, uh, the saxophone lines mm. uh, are like nothing you've like nothing mm. that a traditional saxophonist would play. Mm. It's, exactly. it's hard to hear a saxophone and enjoy melodic. the song. You know what I mean? Yeah, Usually yeah, you put yeah, a saxophone yeah. into anything and it's like, oh god, kill me. No. But they get away with it. 
you know? Well, oh, sax is can't a argue with that. That's a statement <laughs> on this. That's right, yeah. And, and that's what, and again, what I like about it. It's like it a lead, is, but it's not even a melodic lead. You no, know, no. God, no. It's like no, a it's statement just a of like, weird, weird it's almost trills. like a vocal, it's almost like a Yoko Ono style vocal <laughs> yes. explosion yeah, at yeah, different yeah, times yeah, throughout yeah. the record. Yeah. yeah. And it changed everything. Huh. That's, that's the argument of the importance yeah. of this album, isn't it? Because. Um, you really are pinpoint the you know an early part of the seventies mm. um, where music is not really sure what to do. Yeah, you know? exactly. You've had this sort of you know massive explosion in the sixties, and there's a sixties sound, and the sixties yeah. have died. Mm -hmm. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like it died ultimately, and all that. That's the way it was talked about. But at the time, I guess it must have seen a lot like that. You know, you had mm. you, you know, got you got people like Brian Eno mm. coming from this band to go on to do you know incredible electronical work yes, and whatever. Yeah. You got uh, Phil mm. Manzanera, who went on to do s stuff with, you know, solo stuff, but also stuff with, um, you know, uh, Dave Gilmore and whatever. You've got obviously um, Brian, Brian, Brian Ferry, who went Brian, on to obviously have a very successful solo career. And, and he's or, doing he's doing that double thing, right? Where he's yeah. got his solo career going yeah, one yeah. way, and then he's just going, well, no, Roxy Music keeps going on at the same but again, time. But again, mm. I come back to that. The other two guys were fighting driving taxis. You, <laughs> but you've got these people who come together. Yeah. You know, who are just friends from art school, whatever. Ooh. No, you know, they're not like we haven't handpicked these people. No, no. Now, this isn't like some super group who have gone, mm. oh, we'll take him and him and him. Yeah. And yet, you out of that group comes yeah. these talented people who go on to do have their own mm. incredible careers. And, and, and I mean, how influential is Brian Eno in the electronic yeah, scene? Yeah. And, like, yeah. him, he, he alone is, you know, incredibly influential. But on no one others. knew that at the team. No, no, no. no, no, no but I'm saying, but no, how do you just, no, how do you just no. get, like, Those you guys together? Those features were out for that. It, but no, I get that. even with yeah. that one album, it changed, like, as you say, glam rock just happened that mm -hmm. night. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. art rock, probably the new romantic phase, which came along later, Rely mm. heavily on the, the yes. ideas yeah. that they yeah. they did, you know, fashion wise, if not music, That's it. Um, and so it was. Yeah, oh, I'll give it points. But these it, these these Important times album. when you get these guys together in a band like that, and they go off to do these incredible, uh, you know, and have prolonged careers and, and mm. yeah, yeah. So so you sort of, very you sort of interesting go, work. You go, wow, what you know, what, what a, drew them together? What sort of luck, mm. you know, That's that it. they luck. that those guys happen to be exactly. there at art school together. Yeah. And they knew the fashion designer who was, who you know, was their best mate. And so when it, it just suddenly it was like, you know, lightning in a bottle and bang. Yeah, incredible. Because, because again, uh, uh, going back to our previous discussion about that, I'm not talking about a cultural shift. I'm not talking about a reaction no. of, no. Of, 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 you know, like punk rock. No, no, this, no, this is, is just a pure art. musical, a pure art. A yeah. musical blip where yep. suddenly, you know, overnight. Yeah. Um, yeah, this uh, is not a. This this is is not a you may call it depth. It's not a political you know, statement. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really aware at the time that mm. that did change the way people thought about the songs that they could create and put it out. Yeah. You've got me, girl, on the run around, run around, got me all around town. You've got me, girl, on the run around, and it's getting me down. If you want to find a lover, then you look no further, for I'm going to be your only searching at the start of the season, and my only reason is that I Did you have a, what was your important album this week? Um, well, I had... You can't see electric whistle. <laughs> Again. <laughs> electric just whistle. three times in a row, no. <laughs> Never before had an album be put out with a single the same name as the band, <laughs> and the same name as the album. That's right. People it changed. It changed, changed the scene. Everything. It changed everything. Um, well, I think Iron Maiden did it. Earlier, I think you did. with Iron Maiden, oh, Iron, yeah. Maiden Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden. <laughs> really? Um, awesome. Okay. All right. Anyway. Um, Inspiring electric wizard. <laughs> I, I think I started looking at pairs of albums brought out by an artist. Pairs of albums. Yeah, because I was looking at important albums, and I don't know if they were, like, so I started looking. The, you've gone off the brief already. No, no. Well, I started looking at, like, Faith No More, Angel Dust. 
Right. So that was uh, 92. Right. Okay, so it wasn't, I think it was like the fifth album or something. Mm. So uh, there were the ones that they had was the other singer. And then there was uh, the real thing where Mike Patton came on. Yeah. And uh, the Probably single like Epic. Epic, yeah. Yeah, it was Epic. Epic. Um, you know, that went completely ballistic. And so the album was reasonably conventional. They did a couple of strange songs in there compared to the other songs on the album. But then uh, for Angel Dust, it was like they just went, you know what? We've done all the popular stuff on the last album. We're just going to go nuts on this one. And in between uh, Mike Patton, uh, you know, with Mr. Bungle, released Mr. Bungle's first mm -hmm. um, album. So off the back of that, uh, I think Face No More were going, oh, well, you know, we've got a singer here who's quite versatile. We want to be versatile. And so the range of genres that they covered on Angel Dust was... Similar to uh, the Beatles' White Album, I imagine. Well, it was more like... <laughs> no, no, well, that's the thing. That's what got me thinking well, because... Yeah. It, yeah. No, no, because then it was just like, okay, for, uh, like for uh, a type of band that uh, Face No More was... It was quite an eye-opener, I think, for uh, similar types of bands to say, holy shit, yeah, okay. you know, if we want to do anything, we can do yeah. anything if we're capable of sure. it. So Faith and More were capable of doing, you know, hopping genres yeah, within yeah. an album. But in the same way as the Beatles. Well, that's up, a, and that's, and that's the thing. For other bands, so, so then a, the time to go, we can do that as well. Well, that's the thing. So then I looked it's at... Allowed. So then I went back and looked at uh, Revolver which I guess was something similar because you look at Rubber Soul just before it mm. and Rubber Soul was still very conventional. They were very much one genre. They were doing interesting things on it, but nothing compared to Revolver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's not my, f it's certainly not my favorite album. I'd much prefer Sgt. Pepper's, but I think when you look at what it did, it was that same type of idea that <laughs> this is <laughs> kept just Kev's Lord Kev's just consoling <laughs> Lord Ben. So, um, yeah. Just trying to calm him down. That's but I did that same type no, of thing. It was just like, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can do this, yeah. but look what we just did. You yeah, know, we yeah. started genre hopping. Yeah. And then. So what, you, what you're saying, if I can. What you're getting at is mm. the idea that Faith No More have put on the album Beatles of the back of, off the back of success, <laughs> commercial success, with great, re with great records. Yeah. Mm. They brought out something following that up. With the company money, if you like, they yes, probably had you know, which they've just gone great. We can now do whatever we want. Yeah. yeah. So, the, are you getting at the idea that that's an inspirational, artistic message to give out to people mm. who are? Is that I why think it's, it's important? Is that yeah? Well, that I think your, it's important in saying, like at that, the thing, like having the uh, company money behind them allow them to do something different that they may not have been able to do. Now, it could have been commercial suicide for both bands. Um, and Be and Beastie Boys also did it with uh, Paul's Boutique yes. versus Licensed to Ill, their debut album, which made a shitload of money and typecast them as, you know, frat. It was more pure yeah. Yeah, yeah, frat, yeah, frat yeah, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, they come along and said, oh, hang on. Like, they, you know, there's a collaboration with the Dust Brothers who had, you know, written like half the songs as instrumentals. And they had to be chatting and said, no, 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 wait, let's, you know, let's do our stuff on top of what you've already done mm. and we'll do some extra collaboration. But that's the thing is like, you know, for the record company, it must have been frightening to go, what the hell are you doing? Because there's nothing like but tell, but tell me, what you've done before. But tell me, did, so, so with Paul's Boutique, right, you see that, that that just opens up the Beastie Boys to, you, you know, it, 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 the trajectory from on then on is like, wow. Yeah. It was, mm. it was, Same thing with Faith No More. But it was both did, did more artistic well, with, and more popular, really. It wasn't like it really opened them up both in a popularity sense, but also it was more artistic and more critically acclaimed. So, did, well, so did, in, did, in time, I don't know if at the time, yeah. like, like over time, yeah, maybe, I think yeah. it became so, but at the time people were probably going, well, where's our fight for your right to party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, again, did, um, uh, the record company would be happy with what the Beastie Boys did, but the record, record company happy Long with term. what... Faith No More did by going that, that more think, experimental? Well, I think long term. They, they certainly didn't 
I don't think they suffered from it. I mean, they could have kept on doing what they did for the real thing, but there would have been probably a natural end to that when people go, that, well, we've heard all of this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was already my, strong competition with like how red hot chili peppers. Mike Patton's influence, though, having them having seen his Mr. Bungle work, him obviously them being able to have a very successful album with him as lead singer for their mm. first album with him as lead singer. Mm. How much of how much pull did he have at that point on the second album to say, look, I want to do a bit more variety, a bit more, you know, like. Well, he did have more pull. Was it a bit of was it a two way thing, or was it more them just going, yeah, now let's use his talents, or was it him going, no, I want to have more variety? I think it was a more two way. Like yeah. from what I've read, yeah. like the first album that he recorded with Face No More was, you know, they had pretty much written the entire album definitely instrumentally. Mm. Uh, they had the bulk of the lyrics ready. Uh, they just needed a singer to do it. So they could have, you know, had him in and then he disappeared again and they mm. find another singer for the next album. Mm, yeah. But because, okay. you know, he did a good job, they had massive success, and he said, okay, well, look, if we're going to keep going, you know, I want mm. more of a, a role. So. And, and, and I guess you, we can appreciate that because that would be really hard to do rather than going, no, 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 <laughs> we've, we've got a bunch of money mm. and we need a bunch more money by doing the same thing just a bit yeah. better. Yeah. You know, or, or yeah, yeah, let's replicate what we just did. Yeah. Pretty pretty ballsy to go, no, 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 let's throw it all away and, and yeah. go over here now. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was, like, for those three bands, it was like, well, I'm sure it happens with other ones as well. Mm. But it was like that success allowed them to go, okay, instead of replicating that and becoming super rich, mm. we're going to, you know, go 90 degrees and yeah. yes. and do something a bit different. Yeah, cool. Like the Electric Wizard, their second album was the Wizard, <laughs> oh, was the Wizard Electric. Couldn't really, they couldn't well, Wizard Electric they couldn't was their second up. one. So yes, yeah. they Wizard went completely. Electric. It was the Acoustic Wizard. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Couldn't <laughs> quite follow it up. Yeah. Where they went funk and it was, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. acoustic and funk. It and was, it was the Steam Wizard. Yeah, the steam, it just wasn't Yeah, that's right. right. Hip-hop, still not a world that I'm hugely familiar with, but um, I'm going to dive into this anyway. Three Foot High and Rising by De La Soul, um, came out in 1989. Um, last session on important albums, we, of course, brought up um, Public Enemies, um, It Takes a Nation of Millions, or whatever it was called, I can't remember now. Um, I think we brought up NWA as well. Yeah, yes. probably NWA. I so. yep. And that was the world into which... The Daisy Age <laughs> um, uh, rappers De La Soul launched their debut album. So you can see um, a, a, straight off the bat against Fight the Power, you've got I Know, you know, you've got um, uh, The Magic Number, you know, mm. a host of beautiful, beautiful singles, gorgeous songs. Mm. But very this, laid back. Very this really is more trying to bring it to the masses, almost. Isn't um, it? Well, not to the masses, but like it's trying to bring a different edge to. It same, opened like, it up. I it's think trying it's trying to yeah. tell a similar message, but in a lighter touch. There was a, there was a movement around which was um, nicknamed Afrocentric, just slightly after the fact, um, and you had bands like um, Tribe Called Quest, Rest of Development. You mm. know, and I, mm. I name those two in our position because I'm a huge fan of um, the tribe and not so much of the second. And somewhere in between, there was a beautiful band called Della Soul that just um, decided to go completely against the success of hip hop, like completely yeah. against mm -hmm. it. Just like went straight off in the opposite direction, and brought out these peace and loves, um, yeah. peace and love messages. Not to say they were not huge fans of Public Enemy 
um, they weren't all fighting in the same direction. They were all um, talking about um, going to the same record shops even and getting the same samples and fighting for the same beats. But um, this one broke through. It broke through to an audience, um, probably a white audience. It broke through to an audience that um, wasn't previously feeling as comfortable with um, the messages that they were hearing from uh, people like Easy E and Chuck D um, for obvious reasons. But um, I think uh, what it did was, um, you know, it, it just it just changed the scope of where hip hop was at, and yeah. it said this can be really, really flexible. Mm. This doesn't mm. have to just go down this channel. Because mm. if you think about it, you're 18, It doesn't, ha- doesn't have to be angry. It doesn't have to just be, to be violent. Angry. And political. It doesn't have angry to be yeah. so all in can, your face. All I can yeah. see is a bit like, say, um, philosophy or anything else that has movements, like literature, art, whatever you mm. want to call it. Any art form has these movements and directions. They're not necessarily um, going against them, each other. Mm. But um, the trajectory was into you know, a gangster violence, you know, towards mm. that kind of, like, yeah. that type of rap where it was, like, um, you know, gun toting g bangers and all that, and that had its place. But at the time, you know, the pervasive sound was getting really hard edge, and um, and these guys just went, now we're going to do something different. But it's yeah. gonna be a, mm-hmm. And but it's forever gonna after, I would, say, mm. I would argue that that was the album that just said, just because this is the successful sound, it doesn't have to be... Yeah, where everyone has to, yeah. you know, follow. Um, we're over here. We're doing something completely different. Now, the thing I love about these guys is that they've they've stayed around and they've they've improved themselves and they've actually become very hard. You know, a, a very much a gangster rap thing. Yeah, yeah. Like a, a, over time, if you go and see really? them and check out their most recent albums, yeah, they're they're um, they're, they're they're getting into some hard stuff. Um, but this was their message back in the day and. Um, yeah, beautiful songs and that just I think we touched on this last time it doesn't really matter how strong your message is if you don't have the hooks yeah, mm, you haven't written right. these tracks that people mm. you know latch yeah. onto but they were complete lunatics as well these kids they were um, they had these crazy names they called themselves Sodness and um, and Plug One Plug Two and it was all uh, they had their own universe I think is what I'm trying mm. to say so mm. it was a very psychedelic thing it was um, it was contained um, you know, it was his own universe, and it and it had you know the guts to just be out there doing the, the opposite of mm. what was popular, and still became hugely successful. Mm. And I would argue it's important, not just on the sense that it broke through for white people, but it also showed um, folk that were into making hip hop that there was just all bets were on the table again, you know. Yeah. Mm. Because if you think about you know the message and the 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 genuine birth of hip hop, maybe. 15 years or something before that mm. you know it's, yeah. it's it's not too much of a difference to get to where um, uh, Public Enemy were in the same year because you've just gone politics and you've yeah, just thrown yeah. a bit more um, heavy bounce on it and yeah. it's just got a bit more attack and a bit, yeah, yeah. you know and it's you know it's, it's all feeding that same dragon and then all of a sudden along comes the Daisy Age yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and you just think <laughs> How, how bold, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was quite funny. Uh, I heard a, um, there's this little snippet with some contemporary hip hop artist, I can't remember who, but they're saying, oh, you know, well, one of the uh, top people has to be uh, Kanye because, you know, before that, you know, hip hop was all, you know, gangster and it was this and that. And, you know, he was the first to come in and say, right. it can be about peace and love and uh, all this other what? stuff. And, you know, put a bit of thought behind it. It's like, so no, Kanye, yeah, no, yeah, no. no. <laughs> It's like, you know, you're in so, the scene and you haven't, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're either just saying it to suck yeah. up. That's right. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or, wow, you're really ignorant <laughs> of, yeah. of what's come before. And, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, There's exactly right. The, the, the variety, you know, and, 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 you know, people who are more into that particular genre will be able to pull me apart and say, oh, before these guys, there was these guys. Sure. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There was, yeah. Um, it's just in comparison to what was happening at the time. Mm-hmm. But this is the one that's all yeah. through. This has just yeah. changed things. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we were at but high I think school in Scotland to be in the 80s. <laughs> And, and we're all singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Tracks, you know? yeah, yeah, we've yeah. said that in the we're past. Round and round and I think school. People, I think even some members of the Lords may have even shot me down for this. But nah. to be an important album, it has to have reached, 
you know, it has to have an impact. Like, it can't just be, you can't go, well, I heard this, you know, I, I was the only person who bought this album. Yeah, this artist, therefore it's important. Therefore it's important. Like, it, you know, it has to have had some impact. And like mm. you're saying, like, the fact that that reached out and found its way into, you know, into Scottish playgrounds, then, mm. you know, obviously it, it felt... <laughs> I had to fight through a lot of other stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. Nice. Go ahead now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my, that was the one that. Um, yeah, good one. Cool. Three. That's a magic number. Three. It is. It's the magic number. Three. Somewhere in this hip hop soul community was born three may still be me, and that's a magic number. What does it all Difficult preaching is posthumous pleasure. Pleasure in preaching starts in the heart. Something that stimulates the music in a measure. Measure in the music, racing three parts. Casually see, but don't do like the soul. Cause seeing and doing are action for monkeys. Doing hip hop hustle, no rock and roll. Unless your name's Brewster, cause Brewster's a punk. Parents let go, cause it's magic in the air. Criticizing rap, cause you're out of order. Stop looking, listen to the phrase and Fred stairs. And don't get offended while Mace Dosi does your daughter. A dry camera roll system is now set. Fly around the store under Daisy Productions. It stands for the inner sound. Y'all in your cabet that the action not a trick, but show me the function. Everybody wants to be a DJ, everybody wants to be in the sea, but being speakers are the best, and you don't have to guess. Still, I'm so posse, consist of three, and that's a magic number. I was going to mention, um, and did we mention this last time? Velvet Underground and Nico, self titled album? Don't think so. The one with the banana on the cover, great cover. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I won't, I, w- I was going to say that, I won't choose that as my uh, one for tonight though because we've already talked about Roxy Music and that was that album was highly influential um, to Roxy Music's uh, you know and David Bowie mm. around that era yeah. like you talk yeah. about Glam Rock yeah. that was that was you know that, those guys um, was it the banana yeah it's the banana yeah. it was a big influence oh. um, so I'm going to go in a completely different way uh, so, so put that out there as a, as a note but I want to go with so you're trying um, to squeeze two in is what you're saying I'm going to squeeze two in yeah <laughs> I'm going to go with Robert Johnson, uh, King of the Delta Blues Singers. And Robert Johnson um, famously did a deal with the devil. That's right. Uh, at the crossroads. He went away. He, he was a blues singer, went away for a period, mm. came back a brilliant yeah, yeah. finger-picking blues guitarist and went on to make a couple of incredible albums. And Just some movie that... The Karate Kid did. It is. <laughs> Crossroads, yeah. Crossroads. <laughs> and, um, yeah, well, that actually references it. And that was movie. an important movie yeah. as well. Mm. But, yeah, Robert Johnson, uh, he influenced every blues artist, you know, from that point on. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. including into, you know, what then became rock and roll. So, you yes. know, in, including people like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, that, yeah. those, those sorts of guys. So, you know, it doesn't get much more important than that album. And, and it's interesting that because because you you can't doubt that because you know in that blues revival in in mm. uh, England in mm. the late fifties, early sixties. Oh, yeah. I mean that that's the that's the records yeah, those guys oh, are buying. Eric, Eric Clapton. There's countless interviews of him talking about how yeah. influential Robert Johnson was on his yeah, yeah. On his style yeah. on his playing on yeah, just on his career. Uh, you name any. Yeah, blues player. Yes, white or black, you know. Yeah. Since they all mention Robert Johnson at some point as as being such an because influence. that's bizarre in itself. So you're talking about you know England in the '60s, mm. some white boys yeah. going, man, we really love this album from the '30s. Yeah, they're looking for mm. Delta you know? blues stuff, yeah. and you're sort of going, right. what? Hang on, what? What? How could that happen? How could that guy? How could that guy have such a cut through mm. from mm. the '30s? You know, that's it. That that people in the sixties are going. Let's get it. Let's get this guy. Let's get into yeah, this I guess, guy. I guess people were always interested in the history of music. Like if you're into it, then you start mm. looking back. You That's know, it. Where did that come from? Mm. I guess at some point there had to be one guy. Yeah, and, and I, I know that sounds ridiculously yeah, simplistic, yeah, yeah. but there had to be someone mm. who kind of like put out the first record. But you're right. Whatever, you mean but, Adam? He, was, right. he wasn't alone, <laughs> yeah. but he became the focal point. Yeah, yeah. but you're right. But he, he became the, because the, the figurehead of you know, mm. all these the all these sixties bands from from England, you know, and let, let's assume that's where that started. They were looking for American artists 
you know, they would they would get the latest records. They listen to like the the Amsterdam radio stations to to listen to like R and B artists from the from the U S that were being rebroadcast into Europe. You know, they and they would they would hear the things that were on the radio, but then they would want to delve deeper yeah. and go, well, what else Where's has that person done, yeah. or, or, who, or who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who influenced that artist? And and they would just keep going back, and and eventually sure. it all leads to to Robert Johnson at some point. Yeah. Uh, certainly on the blues side, and so yeah, that's that's my entry. As and a, that, and that goes back again to this incredible idea that the poor bastard probably made no money out of no. any of that at oh, all. No, yeah, yet, no money. yet. I mean, how much money has Eric yeah. Clapton made? Yeah, and mm. had, ongoing, and, I, you and know. had to sell his soul to the devil. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And he should have. Uh, I mean, he should have collected on um, condom sales as well. <laughs> uh, like they ended up getting, you know, uh, over time the language, you know, changes whatever. You know, becoming rubber John, jo- rubber Johnny. So it was just, <laughs> you know, right. didn't did hey, I, didn't read that entry in Wikipedia. But yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just, you know, it's just one of those tragedies. Sure. Yeah. Any other albums I want to mention there? Uh, do we want to go around again or do we want to save it for the next time? Yeah, maybe save it for the next time. All right, we'll save it for the next episode. Here's what I've learned mm-hmm. Alan knows way too much about the history of naming of condoms. <laughs> right? That just seems weird. And I can't wait for Kev's group, a uh, new hip hop group called the Gun Toten G Bangers. <laughs> That's a great name for your band. Okay, I'm, I'm there. I'm right there for yeah. it. Front row. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. The gun tight and G bangs. So we might have team. All right, <laughs> we'll start a we'll start a crowdfunding account to get that off the ground and uh, look a up posse funding account. Look for a <laughs> posse funding mm. account. We'll also be right. doing a, um, a linguistic study to find out what you people mean by England when you keep saying that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, because uh, yeah. That's all just England, isn't it? No, it's, England. <laughs> it's all England, isn't it? Yeah, it's all just. After yeah. three, after three calls on that, I'm forced to say something. <laughs> In one episode, no less. Uh, and it's good night from him, and it's good night from me. <laughs> and it's good night from him, and it's good night from me. <laughs> and so uh, we'll end it there. And thanks for listening, and join us again on The Lords Aloud. And don't forget to check out our website, lordsofloud.com. And also find us on Instagram and Facebook, both at Laws of Loud. Thanks for listening.